Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the course of real time embedded system. Today we will start chapter number 5, lecture number 12 and it's going to be about memory. In previous lecture we talked about memory, writability and storage permanence. We looked at some common memory types like mask pro programmable ROM, one time programmable ROM, erasable programmable ROM, electrically erasable programmable ROM. We looked at the internal structure of ROM. We looked at word line. We looked at data line in ROM. I also told you about the external view and we talked about how we can use ROM for creating combinational logics. In today's lecture, we will focus on flash memory, RAM, basic type of RAM, composing RAM, and memory hierarchy along with some thing about caches. So let's start about it. So before we start, I just want to like recall erasable programmable ROM so that you have a better idea of how erasable programmable ROM works because flash memory is like quite similar to electrically erasable programmable ROM. So we know that in programmable ROM we have components that is metal oxide transistor and this transistor has a floating gate and between source and drain there is a channel and in this channel logic one is stored and like we can have many combination of these this unit a so it will become like for example this this line shows a word and this vertical line shows a data so we can have many units of this depending upon the memory size m cross n so if you look in the b large positive voltage at gate causes negative charges to move out so if we apply large positive voltage like 15 volts the negative charges will get out of the gate and get they will get trapped in the gate they will get out of the channel and get trapped in the drain and they will store like logic zero. Now, this is how we can write program it with one and zero. But what if like we have to remove something like remove data, what we need to do? For erasing, we typically shine ultraviolet rays on the surface of floating gate as you can see here. We're shining ultraviolet rays on the surface of floating gate causes negative charges return channel so the negative charges will go back that were trapped inside the gate restoring logic one so we'll get back to normal stage you need to like expose this room to like 5 to 30 minutes in ultraviolet rays so an EP room package shows quartz window through which UV light pass so this like this is the EP row model and this small thing shows a quad and I told you like it's a chemical substance which is widely available in earth now EP ROM provide better writability can be erased and reprogrammed thousand of times so you can like reprogram and erase it thousand of times reduce storage permanence program last about 10 years so the program can like this ROM can hold program for like 10 years, but it's like susceptible to radiation and electric noise. Like electric noise may remove it, so data may get lost. Typically used during design development. So we use this kind of a RAM during design development. So now let's move on to our next topic. And that is in continuation of EP ROM, that is EEP ROM. So electrically erasable programmable ROM is similar to erasable programmable ROM. Only difference is that here we do not like erase the content of the data using UV lights. However, the data is erased here electrically. So program and erase electrically, typically by using higher than normal voltage. So whenever we have to erase something, like we want to go from one state to another state, what we do, we apply higher than normal voltage can program and erase individual words so we can like program and erase individual words 
better writability can be in system programmable so it can be on system because you not you don't need to get it out of the system in order to like erase something it can be programmed and reprogrammed in system with built-in circuit to provide higher than normal voltage hop or we need some sort of circuitry which provide higher voltages in order to erase it so for that purpose we use built-in memory controller commonly used to hide details from memory user so everything comes under built-in memory controller which perform this section of providing normal than higher voltage the writes very slow due to erasing and programming so the speed of this eep rom is typically slow compared to ep rom bz pin indicates to processor eep rom still writing so we have like bz pins available which shows that eep rom is still writing can be erased and programmed just like ep rom thousand of time similar storage permanence to ep rom which can hold data for 10 years however it is less susceptible to radiations and noise far more convenient than ep roms but more expensive because of this extra circuitry to provide higher than normal voltages now we'll go back to our topic of today there is flash memory and this was this was all just to refresh your memory about ep rom and eep rom um, so the common type of memories that we encounter is programmable rom one type programmable rom ep rom that we just discussed as eep rom that we also discussed so today we are going to talk about flash ram and its type how to compose a memory and memory hierarchy along with cache so flash memory is an extension of eep rom that was developed in late 1980s while using the same floating principle as we were using in the case of eep rom so it's just an extension of eep rom using the same floating gate principle same writability and same permanence as in the case of eep rom now it can be erased fastly compared to EP ROM. Large block of memory erase at once rather than one word at a time, which we typically do in EP ROM. Blocks typically are several thousand bytes large, so you can erase a complete block at once rather than removing one word at a time. Now it writes to single word may be slow so erasing is fast however writing to single word may be slower entire block must be read so you need to read entire word before the word gets updated then entire word written back so you need to read the whole word then the update will take place and then the entire block will be written this is how the writing function of flash memory works used with embedded system so you have, might have seen like these kind of a flash memory is used with many embedded system for storing large amount of data and that is non-volatile memory it means that even if the power is turned off the data will remain in the memory so you use usbs memory cards and digital cameras we have flash memory with tv setup box in order to store the programs the live streaming we have flash memory in our cell phones so it's just an extension of ep rom same floating principle floating gate principle easy erasing fast power writing is quite slow let's move on to next slide so in this slide we are going to talk about ram ram stands for random access memory Typically, this memory is volatile, means that whenever the power gets off, the bit are not held without power supply. So you cannot withhold the data without a power supply. You must need to have power supply in order to hold the data. Okay. Now, read and written too, too easily by embedded system during execution. So you can easily use this kind of memory to an embedded system for reading and writing purposes. 
in top figure you can see that the external view of this kind of a memory is kind of the same as it was of from so you have address lines from a naught to a k minus one we have read write signals because this memory can read as well as write and we have enable signal so 2 raised power k into n is the size of this memory okay where q naught to q n minus 1 are your data lines that can be like input and output and a naught to k minus 1 are your address line in order to access the word so internal structure you can see here the internal structure is shown below it is quite similar to the structure of ROM. Same decoder is used. For example, if we have like two address lines, so we need to have two into four bit decoder. So two inputs and four outputs. So four output means like we have four words. So these are our four words. One word, two word, three and four. These are our inputs i0, i1, i2, and i3 data input, and these are our output. And this one is memory cell. Before, you might have seen that there was a program connection between this word and the input data, but here in internal structure, we have a memory cell, and every cell has a read write signal, so we can write to any particular cell or read from any particular cell. And decoder is used to minimize the circuitry. So a word consists of several memory cells, each bit storing each storing one bit. So this word, the first line consists of one, two, three, and four cells. Each input and output data line connects to each cell and its column. So this I naught is connected to all these cells. Okay, all these cells. And similarly, the Q naught is connected to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Read write connected to every cell, as I've told you. When row is enabled by decoder, for example, this top row is enabled by the decoder, each cell has a logic that stores input bit. When read write indicates write. So, when read write indicates write, it stores the input data bit or output stored bit when read write indicates read so in the case of read <coughs> it outputs the stored bit in case of read write write signal it inputs the data bit so during write it inputs and during read it outputs okay so that is pretty simple like when you have write signal enabled the data will come here and it will store here or when you have read signal, the data will come from here and will, it will output here. So this is how the RAM internal structure looks like. So this is cell. Let's move on to next slide. So in this slide, we will talk about some basic type of frames. There are two basic type of frame, static RAM and dynamic RAM. Static RAM is faster but larger than dynamic RAM. Furthermore, static RAM is easily implemented on the same high C as processor, whereas dynamic RAM is usually implemented on separate IC. So let's talk about the SRAM, static RAM. This is the model of the static RAM, whereas this is the model of the dynamic RAM. And these are the internal memory cells. So in case of static RAM, memory cell uses flip-flops. So these are like this is a flip-flop so we need like six transistors in order to make a flip-flop so this diagram holds data as long as the power is supplied okay so these are our data and these are our write signals so this holds the data as long as our power is supplied these are ground these are power lines and what about like DRAM now here you can see that DRAM cell uses metal oxide transistor. So it is just using a single transistor whereas this is using transistor 
and these transistors make up six flip flops so we are using six flip uh, transistors here one two three four five and six so whereas we just have one transistor here and then we have a capacitor so memory cell uses metal oxide transistor and a capacitor to store bit more compact than SRAM however in case of capacitor refresh required due to capacitor leak now what does that mean word cell refreshed when read whenever you read the memory words must be refreshed otherwise the current will flow through it and it will leak so typical refresh rate of 15.625 microseconds so whenever we have a DRAM we refresh the word after every read so this kind of memory is slower compared to SRAM okay however the SRAM is like quite complex it requires six transistors and it is on chip this one is off chip let's move on to our next slide so in this slide we will talk about the two types of RAM vari variations number one is PS RAM PS RAM stands for pseudo static RAMs PS RAMs are DRAMs means dynamic RAM with the memory refresh controller built in as I've told you previously that DRAMs required refresh rate controller whenever you read the memory location we must need to refresh otherwise the capacitor will do some leakage current so thus since the RAM user not worry about refreshing the device appears to behave like SRAM because in PS RAM there is a built-in memory refresh controller so user don't need to worry about refreshing rate so it's just like it just act like a SRAM okay however in contrast to true SRAM a PS RAM may be busy refreshing itself when access so it may be slower because of refreshing which could slow access time and add some system complexity nevertheless they are popular low cost high density alternative to SRAMs okay so you can use these RAM as an alternative to SRAM number second is NVRAM which stands for non-volatile RAM now non-volatile RAM is a special variation that is able to hold data even after power is removed so non-volatile so it means that this RAM holds data even the power is off we have two types of NVRAM. Number one is battery bank, and number two is SRAM with EEP ROM or flash. So the battery bank RAM contains the battery bank RAMs contain static RAM along with its own permanently connected battery. So in this battery bank, we have SRAM with permanently connected battery, and we call this non-volatile RAM okay writes as fast as reads so the speed is quite fast because it is SRAM and SRAM is quite fast compared to DRAM however this RAM is not volatile because we are connecting a permanent battery no limits on number of writes unlike non-volatile ROM based memory okay because in ROM we cannot program it or store the data again and again but this is RAM now the second type of non-volatile RAM is SRAM with flash or with EP ROM stores complete RAM content on EP ROM so what does this do we have a SRAM but it stores its contents on flash or EP ROM before power turned off so this was was using battery However, this will not use battery rather it will store its content on flash before turning off okay so let's move on to our next slide so in this slide we will talk about composing and memory an embedded system designer is often faced with situation of needing a particular size memory it can be ROM or RAM but having readily available memories of different sizes for example 
the designer may need a two raised power k into eight row, but may have four raised power k into 16 ROM readily available. Alternatively, the designer may need 4 raised power k into 16 ROM, but may have available 2 raised power k into 8 ROM available. The case where the available memory is larger than needed memory is easy to deal with. Okay, Simply use the needed lower words in the memory, thus ignoring unneeded higher words. So whenever we need a like smaller memory and larger is available what we can do we can simply ignore the rest of the words and we use the lower data input output lines thus ignore unneeded higher data lines of course we could use the higher data line and ignore the lower data lines the case where the available memory is smaller than needed requires more design so you can see here like there are three possible ways to increase the size of the memory. Number one, increase number of words. So you can see here, like this is one ROM block, this is another ROM block, and the outputs are getting R. So this is two risk for M into N ROM block. So if we use two, the size of this will become two risk for M plus one. So this is our same m or m this will become m plus one so now you can see that i have already told you this first thing is word and this n is data okay the number of bits so now here we are using what we are, what we did we increase the number of words so increase number of words so a naught a1 a2 up to a m minus 1 are going into this and this simultaneously whereas a on the basis of a m that is the last address line we are deciding like if for example if we are designing four cross four memory we'll have two cross four decoder okay so and in this particular case what we are doing we are using one cross two decoder because we need to select either this or this okay so one address line is going here one address line is going here when am is zero this will be selected when am is one this will be selected and this is the am enable of course this is the external view we will have a decoder inside this as well as i've told you in previous slides so let me recap this if you want to increase the number of words you can connect the rom blocks in top to bottom design just like this as shown here so when available memory is larger simply ignore unneeded higher word address bits and higher data lines when available memory is smaller for example this is smaller compose several smaller memories into a larger one so these are smaller smaller memories and we are composing them into a larger one connect top to bottom to increase number of words so top to bottom to increase number of words connect side by side to increase width of words so now you look here we have 2 is for m into n room 2 is for m into n room 2 is for m into room and this enable is going into all the rooms and then this a naught to am is going into all the rooms now what we did here we increasing width okay what we did we doesn't increase the word in fact we increase the width of the words now the size of the word is increased number of words are not increased number of words are again a naught to am so now the ROM size is 2 raised per M into 3 N. And we have separate output Q0 to some point, then Q2 N minus 1 N, Q3 N minus 1. Okay. So these are the outputs. So we can assume that if we have like N is what we can say. If n is 2, then we have 6 output here, 6 here, and 6 here. So total we will have 18 outputs, okay? 
if n is how much n is if n is 6 okay if n is 6 we will have total 16 outputs 6 6 and 6 total 18 q0 to q15 okay so this is how we can increase the width of words now added higher order address line select smaller memory containing desired word using decoder so we can see that for higher order address line we can connect it to the decoder for selecting the desired memory desired word combined techniques to increase number of words here what we have done so this approach is known as increase words where this approach the horizontal one is increase words so here we have increased the words and width of words okay and all these are connected vertically as well as horizontally and this is decoder just like this decoder in order to select these okay however here we have to select one two three four so we will need decoder of size how much two cross four okay so we need two inputs and four outputs in order to select these so here we can increase the word as well as the width of the words so this is how you can compose a rom okay so let's move on to next slide so in this slide we will talk about memory hierarchy and cache sorry i forgot to point out cache so when we design memory to store an embedded system program we design memory for what purpose either for storing program or for storing data we often face some problem the problem is that if we use inexpensive memory that is kind of a main memory that memory tends to be slow whereas fast memory tends to be expensive the solution to this problem is to create a memory hierarchy so in order to deal with this slow and fast problem we make this hierarchy so processor resistor and cache cache is on chip whereas main memory is off chip and this disk and tapes are secondary devices we can use an inexpensive but slow main memory so we can use this main memory to store all programs data we can use small amount but fast memory to store copies of likely access part of main data memory so this cache holds the copies of likely access or most recently access parts of main memory using cache is just like posting a paper on the wall near a telephone which shows short list of important phones number rather than posting the entire phone book so we just paste a paper on the wall showing the important phone number so the cache holds the copies of likely access part of main memory some system include even larger and less expensive form of memory so some system can have disk or tape but however we do not consider these further as they are not common in embedded system these two disk or tapes are not common we use flash memory we use rom ram but we do not use disk or tapes in embedded system as you noticed or you might have seen or you might have heard that we may include number of levels of cache so you might have seen in computer system level 1 cache level 2 cache level 3 cache so we may include any number of level of cache those closer to processor being smaller and faster those closer to main memory a level 2 cache scheme is common so level 1 is closer to the processor level 2 is closer to the main memory so that was about today's lecture if you have any problem, you can ask me at the end of the lecture. Thank you very much.